Okay, this is a short video on the ANOVA basics, or the basics of the analysis of variance, and the idea of comparing distributions statistically. So, first thing I want to start with is the idea of how we can draw the distribution in a way that's not basically like this normal distribution curve. It's got the center at the mean, and the spread in the data is some estimate of variance. So an alternative way of drawing this, and let's do it for two groups, is to put the mean as a dot and the variation in the data is represented as whisker bars. This is basically the same thing as saying here's the mean and here's the spread in the data. So we're just reversing it so that we can have a categorical axis, a categorical, categorical independent axis, and then our dependent axis on this side. So the basic idea behind the analysis of variance is pretty simple. So uh, in the analysis of variance, you're trying to summarize your distributions, the two or two or more different populations that you're comparing into a single number, the F statistic. This statistic is simply a ratio of two things. Your F statistic equals among group variation over within group variation. So what these two things are is actually re really simple. So the among group variation, the numerator in this, is simply if we have multiple groups here are three groups, group one, group two, group three, with the big dot being their means. What we can also calculate is a mean for all groups. We'll call this x bar bar. This is the grand mean. We can, similarly, similar to how we looked at the, the standard deviation of an individual distribution by subtracting the, the mean from each point, we can do something similar here where we take the mean of each group and see how different it is from the grand mean. So this is the deviation of group means from the grand mean. So this is your among group variation. So let's just explore that very quickly. If you have two plots here. We're going to have three groups in each. And here's our grand mean. Here are another three groups that share the same grand mean. which is going to have a higher among group variation. Well, all three of these groups, the grand mean is the same, but the mean, the departure from the mean in each of these cases is really small, so low among group variation. Here, this is high among group variation. That means this is going to have a high F relative to this circumstance. So that's the numerator. So a high F in this case is going to be driven by a high among group variation, the numerator in the equation for F. So the other thing that contributes to F is within group variation. Within group variation is simply the spread of the data within any group. So 
if we have points like this in two different groups, here is the mean for this group and here is the mean for this group, the within group variation is how far points are from the mean. So this is equivalent to when you're calculating variance or standard deviation for any individual distribution. But you calculate this and basically average it for all of the groups that you're comparing. So now you have some estimate of the general spread in data within groups. So you can imagine some different circumstances. Let's say one set where you have, we'll just do this with two groups, there's a fair amount of spread in the data for these two groups compared to an alternative with the same means where these bars are much smaller. There's less within group variation in this case and more within group variation in this case. What that's going to do is change the F because this is among over within and here we're talking about within group variation so a smaller value in the denominator is going to cause F to be bigger so big F small F so F is going to be bigger in the, the, the size of F is going to change based off of whether your denominator is increasing or decreasing and whether your numerator is increasing or decreasing. So just as a review, let's take four circumstances. Here we have two means and here's the grand mean for in this case. Here we have Which of these two circumstances is going to have a higher F? Well, even though I haven't drawn it as really high among group variation, these two means are much more different than these two means. So this is going to have a higher F relative to this. And similarly, if we take the same two basic means, The within group variation is much greater here than here. High within group variation is going to make F decrease here, increase. So in this set of drawings, we have F going up either through the numerator or through the denominator. And in this group, we have F going down either through the numerator or the denominator. So one thing, one final thing to keep in mind, as described before, the basic uh, relationship between the F statistic and a p-value is as F increases, P decreases. So F is increasing as the groups become more distinct from each other. They're clearly uh, visibly different populations typically. And then the p-value decreases, and this, this is a, a simple relationship because your p-value is again the probability that the null hypothesis is true, and your null hypothesis is that the groups, whatever they are, do not differ. That is, they have the same mean. So as this would be a very low f, meaning a very high p-value, a p basically approaching 1 or 100% probability that your null hypothesis is true. So as f becomes bigger, the more likely you are to be able to reject your null hypothesis. We'll have more details on the specifics of an ANOVA analysis in a later video.